prospect importing. In this lecture, we're going to learn more about importing prospects in your Parat. When Salesforce provisions you a brand new Parat instance, it has zero prospects. Logically, right? After you set up your Salesforce connector and enable two-way sync, you give your Salesforce connector a green light to create new prospects in Parat that was created in Salesforce. To reiterate, it will mean that only those leads and contacts that were created in Salesforce after the connector was enabled, it will only then create that lead or contact as a prospect in Pardot. So this will mean if you want to see in Pardot all your historical prospects, you will need to import them first before you go live but after you finish your implementation, obviously. So only then you will gonna have all your historical also prospects available in Pardot to start mailing and using the tool. So this will be the first moment probably for you when you'll counter a need to actually use Pardot importing feature. Now let's go to Pardot settings, imports, and explore all the available options there. First things first, there are many considerations that you need to know before importing new prospects in your Pardot.org. Keep these considerations in mind when importing your prospects. On the screen, you will see all of them, but I personally will gonna share the most important ones. So the first one is, in accounts that don't allow multiple prospects with the same email address, Pardot handles duplicate emails in a special way. When the import file has more than one prospect with the same email address, the field value in the last entry will be imported and used. The first row in the import file is reserved for headings and is ignored during the import. If your prospect custom field can record and store multiple responses, the data in the import file adds to the current value for that field if it already exists. It doesn't overwrite the existing value. Only valid email addresses are accepted. Email addresses containing HTML or invalid characters will be skipped during the import and will appear in the error file. I recommend that you don't import values with all caps because when you're gonna be using the merge fields in Pardot to customize your email templates, or for example, use your assets, prospect data will appear exactly in that way how you have imported it. Imported dates need to be in the following format. They need to start with year, month, and then date. You can reassign assigned prospects during the import. However, if assigned prospects have already a different owner in the CRM, they are reassigned in Pardot during the import, but on the next sync, to maintain consistency, the CRM will gonna have a priority and it will gonna override back the owner. And unfortunately, during the import, you can't assign prospect to a queue. It must be a valid user. Import allows you to easily upload a CSV file to create new prospects, update existing prospects or both. You can choose to use the Salesforce lead or contact ID or email address as a unique key to find existing prospects or create new prospects in Pardot. I will select create or upload prospects using email address as prospects that I want to import do not have CRM ID. But if these records are exported directly from Salesforce, I would highly recommend adding the CRM ID to make sure they match to a correct record in case you have, for example, duplicate data duplicate lead or duplicate contact or both or many of them and i must tick the checkbox that confirms that my uploaded file will comply with Pardot's permission-based marketing policy in a nutshell basically you're confirming that prospects that you are about to import are gathered and recorded in the ethically correct way and these prospects have actually confirmed their consent that they want to receive marketing emails from you. Now I'll press next. And on a second screen, 
you will be presented with rows with all the fields from your CSV file. Column names in the spreadsheet that matched existing field labels in Pardot will be automatically mapped. Pardot is actually doing a pretty good job with that. But additionally, you can also manually map those fields that were not mapped. You might want to consider overwriting an existing data in the field. This is great, for example, if you want to re-upload an existing prospect in Pardot after you have fixed the values on the mass in the sheet in your Google Drive, let's say. But please be careful here with your field settings. Whenever you're creating a new field in Pardot and specifying sync behavior, if the use Salesforce value is selected, all your newly uploaded values will be changed in Pardot and will be overwritten later by Salesforce. Hence, Pardot importing feature only is and should be used for importing new prospects or fixing Pardot only prospects. Or, of course, then before you actually import these new prospects in Pardot, and if the sync behavior is selected to Salesforce, you need to update that setting in your Pardot settings, do all your importing, make sure data is synced properly and accordingly, and then basically go back to your field settings in Pardot and change it back for the CRM Salesforce to be the main one. Now let's press next button. Here, you will need to select a campaign that we want these prospects to get assigned with. For this specific case, it is a best practice to create campaign called first imported in Pardot for importing brand new prospects in your Pardot org. Or if you're importing prospects that you gathered from a specific trade show or any other event, you would want to create that event campaign in Salesforce first and then select it here on the import. This is also true for the lead source field. You must add that column in your sheet for all new prospects and add their values before importing them into Pardot. This is because mostly lead source field is a required field in Salesforce and Pardot prospects otherwise then won't sync with Salesforce otherwise. And to summarize this, you want to make sure you add columns in your import file for all your Salesforce required fields to make sure when the lead becomes MQL, marketing qualified lead, or if you don't have yet established MQL practice for your prospects, they still sync to Salesforce as soon as they meet the criteria that you set. Otherwise, you will see an error on the prospect directly, or if you go and press connectors and review all errors, that prospect will be there as well, saying that, hey, I can't be synced to Salesforce because I'm missing the required field value, so please fix me. Here are two options that you're gonna get when you're gonna importing your prospects. First one, do not change the campaign for existing prospects, recommended. And this is the most common option you're gonna be selecting because you wanna make sure you do not override the campaign value for those leads and contacts that already has one in the org. Otherwise, if for example, you made a mistake in your prior import, you can use the second option and change this campaign for all prospects. And obviously this will gonna override the campaign for existing prospects as well. Use it wisely. Lastly, on the screen, you can apply a tag to your prospect. Tags are great as they might give you an insight of some key things about the prospect when viewing their profile in Pardot. Or you can also use tags for filtering prospects in Pardot as an additional criteria in your dynamic lists or even in your B2BMA reports in Salesforce. So don't underestimate the power of meaningful tags. But first, make sure you're actually internally aligned on the naming convention and you are actually using and utilizing your business's best practices to tag prospects so others can find them and know what your created tags actually mean. Now, let's press next. And here, you will need to select an action to be performed on your imported prospects. The default that is always selected is import prospects and add to the list. This will allow you to select one or more lists for your imported prospects to be automatically added as soon as they upload to your part out. Next, import prospects and remove from list or lists. 
This will allow you to select one or more lists for your imported prospects to be automatically removed from. Next, import prospects and global opt out them. This option will allow you to automatically opt out your imported prospects. This is the option you should choose when importing opted out prospects from your legacy system. This is key option, especially with all the GDPR regulations because you want to make sure your marketing team doesn't accidentally email prospects that actually opted out previously already. Also, worth mentioning that opted out prospects do not count against your Parlot storage, so don't worry about that. They're not going to take up more space than they should. Next, import prospects. This option will import your prospects without adding them or removing from any of the lists. Lastly, here is one maybe even dangerous selection that will allow you to undelete matching prospects found in the recycle bin during this import. A prospect will be considered a match if its email address matches the email address provided in your CSV file. If the only matching prospects are in the recycle bin, this option will undelete them. If this option is not selected, prospects with the email addresses that matched prospects in the recycle bin will not be imported. In general, you should never be ticking this box because let's be fair, if you already deleted that prospect, there must be a reason why they're in the recycle bin. So let's not risk it. Now I will press on next. Here, I will need to select an existing list or I can also create a new list on the fly. For the demo purposes, let me create a new list on the fly. I will name my list 2021 February Parat Online Training Subscribers. I will add it to my folder and press Save List. Here I can see my list was automatically added. Or for example, if you go one step back and choose just Import Prospects, you will be able to skip adding prospects to a list at all. And then I will be brought to my last screen where I can review all my data and press confirm and save button to proceed with the import. After you hit confirm and save, your file will appear in CSV imports. You will always be able to see who imported the file, when the file was imported, what is the status, and for all newly imported files, it will be always set as processing initially. For those ones that already finished loading, you'll be able to see how many new records were created, how many records were updated, and if you had any errors. When you click on the specific number, you will see all exact prospects. Now let's navigate to prospect field and find an existing picklist and click on the edit option. Here we have an option to check validate this field on import. This option will be available for all checkboxes, radio buttons, drop-down lists, and multi-select lists. If you select this option, it would mean that all values that you import for this specific field will get validated. And if you'll try to import values that do not exist in this picklist value, this specific prospect will get an error. There are six common errors that you should be aware of before you import prospects into Pardot. So first error that can happen is archived prospects are not imported unless undelete matching prospects found in the recycle bin during the import option is selected. The second option, the email address is invalid. The third, the imported field value doesn't match the predefined values. Fourth, the email address isn't allowed. Pardot rejects spammy and role-based email addresses on import because they are likely to cause spam complaints and block listing. Fifth, the time on your computer is incorrect. We recommend that you update your computer's time using the resource like www.time.gov. And lastly, the prospect is not assigned to the user performing the import and the user doesn't have the view prospects not assigned to self permission. So now you know everything about importing, good luck.